I know you've spoken before a bit about how the recording process for the second album was quite intense. Mm. How did the third one compare to that? Was a bit equally equally as intense. We we always do it the same way. Uh, it was slightly different, wasn't it? It was the same concept as we had twelve days, but Eddie wasn't. We weren't all there for oh, the yeah, whole no twelve sense, days, yeah. so we did all of the drums in like the first two or three days, and then so it wasn't. On simplicity, it was a track a day, like bang, bang, bang. This one, it was like a bit of a track each day, and it felt longer. But it was so it was still very intense. But for some reason, we decided that that was the best way to do it. We never give ourselves a lot of time. <laughs> so again, two weeks to get a whole album yeah, yeah. recorded. So <laughs> late nights, early early starts. Yeah. I know you. I noticed you worked with Geffen personally again on it. Yeah. I also noticed that you've worked with Morgan Ten quite a few mm -hmm. music videos. How important is it for you to keep working with the same people and kind of? It's good. It's good. Like I mean, if you've got something that works, keep doing it. And yeah, you just consistency, I guess. Like you kind of have a. Like I think our, the production on the second album, I think it's it, it kind of sounds like it's been done by the same producer. So yeah, then, likewise, if you've got the uh, same photographer throughout, you have a, a theme or. A, a style that you carry with sure. um, and they, they start generating their own ideas for what would work with you as opposed to it just being a bit fresh and raw you can kind of get into it a bit, a bit more depth so yeah, it's good do you feel like as well that you maybe trust each other a bit more in the band after having been together so long now as band members or yeah. do we trust those guys uh, but as band members trust each other as band uh, members oh it's, it's the same I guess like I mean, obviously, yeah, because we've been together for like seven or eight years. Yeah. We didn't really know each other that well, especially us. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, just between us two, yeah, definitely. Like, yeah. Sort of best mates, aren't they, at the end of the day? I don't trust them. Eddie one bit. <laughs> That's why he's not here. <laughs> <laughs> As you've kind of, you know, you've been a band for a few years, three albums in, does it get any easier to make records or is it still a strip? It's, it's, it's not an easy thing to do anyway, so. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's easier in the sense of progression. So, like, there's certain things that I wouldn't do now that I did on the first album or on the second album, and there's stuff that I wouldn't do that happened on the third album. Not off the top of my head, but it's just when you come to the nitty-gritty of writing a song, you know when and when stuff didn't work, and mm. you, you learn all these ways of doing it, so... It's still hard though, because you've still got to, there's an element of, you can't just do the same thing again. You have to almost wait until you work out a new sound or idea, you can't just force it. So, still, yeah, it's, it, it, some aspects are easier, some are harder. Do you think, like, tonally, with this new album, the tone of it, do you think it's more a pessimistic record or an optimistic record? I personally think it's an optimistic record, but I understand the, that why someone would think it isn't. But because I wrote it lyrically, I understand where I was coming from. And it's all about, a lot of it is, a, is about sort of discovering yourself. But from the first stop of not of being lost and, you know, so to me, it is an optimistic album. But maybe musically it's not very optimistic, it's very... Sad. It's a sad, <laughs> sad album. <laughs> when I listen to it, I find it quite like brooding and contemplative. And I know I've said to a few folk that it's like a nighttime record. Like, yeah. If you want to listen to it at night, when you shifted down to London, did that kind of impact what you were creating in that sense? I think that's a little bit, a little bit. I think you, when you move city, you, especially like Wolverhampton, because that's where I. Like my parents live, Wolverhampton to London is such a different world. Like it's literally a world apart mm. in terms of lifestyle and just all sorts of stuff. And culturally and you just pick up on little things and like write, writing became a bit easier. You sort of have a different direction suddenly and because it's still you writing it, it's still you. It doesn't completely change it. So, you would you were, you were in surrounded by more artistically flamboyant people. Making That's it down as to well. London as yeah. well as staying back at home. Right? To and to see yeah. each other 
pretty much in day to day. Not not, my, not many people create music where we're from really, because we're not from the centre of Birmingham where there's a music scene. Like we're from like small towns from just dying around it, and it's there's not that many creative people in those kind of towns around the Midlands, to be honest. To suddenly be in yeah. overflowed with creative people, I guess. Yeah, never think about that. Mm. It's interesting what you're saying there about being sort of a creative people because another one of the things I got from the album was that sonically it almost feels a little bit riskier, a little bit more ambitious. Mm. Kind of just, you know, better overall. Were there any parts on it when you put it out that you had a bit of, were you doubtful at any parts or were you quite confident? No, I was confident of the whole thing, but um, I was anxious for when Fear came out. Yeah. Because I'd that was just a, such a step, like, from what we normally do. Yeah. I'd say more interested than anxious. I just wanted to yeah. see what people thought. But yeah, specifically Fear, for example. Um, there's one that we recorded that hasn't been put out. Um, but right in that as well. Similar vibe, in it? Yeah, yeah. similar. Um, whether that gets put out or not, I don't know what the plan is for that. Um, but, yeah, interested, not worried, interested. Yeah. We, were, we were confident with the album. Yeah. Like, we loved it. Like, we, I always say to people, we wouldn't put anything out that we didn't um, think was good enough to put out. And that's sometimes why, that's why it took so long to mm. put another album out. A mix between real life and a mix between it's got to be good enough. Yeah. So. Come back to the lyrics again. You have this thing going on. It's, it almost feels to me like it's a little bit existential and you're kind of asking questions about life and what you're doing with life and what is life. Is that something that you felt you were kind of writing about? Or? Yeah, well, it's, it's just always been like a generational thing. Subconsciously, our parents, well, our parents were all by the age of 21, married, house, children, job for life, set, that's it, you know, and, and then when you're sort of 24, 25, and sort of floating about life, it's, you do just sit and think sometimes, like, when's it, not when's it gonna happen, but like, what's the right path, or like, what, what do I do, or how does this happen? And that's, that's a lot of the themes of the album, because that's what, I was dealing with in my head. Does putting that into an album and putting it into music help you kind of answer those questions and further those discussions? Not really. <laughs> Not really, but at least it's it's an expression of it. You know, it doesn't help you find an answer, but it it puts the message out into the world that I guess that there's someone else that feels that way. So that's fine. You're not just like panicking over nothing sort of thing yeah so we've, we've been asked that quite a lot haven't we? yeah. about the message of the album it's always a similar kind of people's view and it is that it's like feeling lost and so yeah so if it gets people thinking about it and maybe talking about their friends with, with each other then I guess that's a good thing to come from it yeah. I mean that's something that shines really strongly on End of the World you know that's a song that's quite emotionally powerful when I listen to that it doesn't sound like a song that you could write you know, just sitting at work daydreaming. Do you have to be like in quite an emotionally intense place to come up with that, or? That, I had the, like the riff of that song and the music for a while, I think, didn't we? Yeah. Um, and we had the chorus, I only had the chorus written. So it was one of those songs that was sort of different part, like the first verse is about something completely different to the second verse, and then the chorus is a, about something different, and then the like middle eight bits are all that different. It's all just a, it's just a song where I've been, whenever I've been pissed off, I've gone, oh, maybe I can write some lyrics for this song. And then just like done it. It's just about being pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> you have these like vibrant bursts of emotion on the album, like do you remember is one that strikes out to me and it kind of builds and then it hits you with that punch. How do you like go about balancing emo like emotional content in a song so that it can hit with like maximum impact? We don't think about it. I'm, I'm not, in, not in a like, oh, it just, we're so good that it just happens, but it's just not something we consider. It's just, I think I've always been quite good at musically channeling an emotion before I've said a word. Like the tone, the, the atmosphere of the music is already making you feel whatever emotion you want before lyrics. And I just think that that, that skill has developed over time to then, to fit it into 
bigger moments of a song like that bit, you know. So does instrumentation quite often come before the lyrics and then the lyrics go on top? Or? Yeah, yeah. I'd say most of our stuff's musically yeah. driven and then the lyrics will come after. 100%. Yeah. And although it's quite an eclectic mix of songs, you know, they're all quite different. The one thing that strikes me about them is they all feel quite honest. Do you think you've gotten more or less honest with your songwriting as you progress in the band? I think you've got to be as honest as possible because if, if you're not believable, no one's going to like it. And that, that's just like from day one, every band needs to know that because if you're just chatting shit, that is quite obvious. That, I don't know, you just need to be believable, you need to be real. And that sounds so like basic, and, yeah. but it's the truth. Like, no one's going to believe what you're singing about if it's not at least a bit real. You know? And if you can channel that already onto a winner. Is it? ever easier to be more honest in music than it is in life sometimes? Like, do you find it easier to communicate through music at all? Or? A little bit, but also you find that a lot of the stuff you write about is a problem or something that happened previously. You don't, especially with like, in, in the terms of how it's received because all the stuff I would have written about on the ceiling would have happened in the couple of years between that those records and then it not actually being released till a year after recording it so all of that stuff that I was writing about is just it's already happened and it's already so in terms of like me if we had a fight now I wouldn't necessarily write about it now you'd hear a song about it three years yeah later. you'd hear about it in like a couple of years does it ever work as like kind of a form of you know closing the book on that moment then is it going to help to a sense of closure to it. A little bit. With some situations, yeah. Depends what you're writing about. But, yeah. Is it weird then singing the songs that, you know, you're up for, like, be slowly now because those situations happened so long ago? Yeah, but then also on the same hand, when you sing a song like uh, Seventeen or um, Cast or uh, Do You Remember or there's a few, it's like, it's like, a reminder of what you've achieved in terms of like my own struggles with like mental health or something and it's like oh yeah that this, this is about my own sort of journey and then so in in a in a weird way performing is a is a form of therapy on some songs because it's just you're literally screaming these words that you wrote about not feeling very well <laughs> Um, I've just got one left to round it out, it's a slightly broader one. Like, creatively, do you find in life it's more important to experience things or create things? Balance. You've got to experience things or you can't create things. Mm. If you lock yourself in a room, with, you're not going to make anything. You need to go away and do shit to then go back and make, make something, you know, like, I've, I'll probably write a ton of songs after this tour because I've not been able to for two weeks. I'll go, for, I'll go for months without making a song and just enjoy my life as far as I can and then a song will just happen. It's not, it's not, I think people have a perception that a lot of bands sit in rooms all day and just hash out music until something happens and that might work for some people but it doesn't really work, it's not how we do it, it's not and that's not how it works for me. Yeah, you've got to find the balance. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. I, I think they're just quite separate things to try and weigh up. Experience mm -hmm. and like, creating something. I, I think it's in, like, incredibly incredible, um, important for people to create, but I, I don't know. I don't see how they're related, <laughs> to be honest. Maybe I'm it? thinking because I, I write lyrics. Yeah, maybe. So I've got to have some kind of yeah, almost a story to tell. Probably just on the on the whole, maybe I don't know. Yeah. It's a good question. <laughs> is that something just just to finish up what you were saying there? Is that something that you've learned over time and over the course of making the three albums, the balance, or is it something you've always? Um, yeah, I guess. Because I mean, this is another perception. It's like when you're in a band, people assume you know the music industry inside out and how it works and how to write a song, and it's it's not. We just started when we were all kids and have ended up here by doing it the way we do it. So you do pick up things 
depending on how you do things. There's no like set way, you know. It's all just how you do it and where you end up off the off luck, basically. <laughs> I guess the experience would affect the overall song, like for example, like Be Slowly or Milkshake EP. I think they sound younger, like it's a bit more, more naive, ain't it? Yeah, it's a bit more just like different beach rock or beach yeah, surf esque. Because yeah. I think like now, I think the songs sound a bit more. There's depth and there's a bit more substance to it, and I think that happens as you gain more experience. And I like, all oh, heard that at some point, or so I guess yeah. So that would be the, how they relate. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time today. It's all right. No, it's good, mate. Thank you.